Let me transform this empty space into a beautiful asteroid field with just two clicks. This tool saved me dozens of hours in level design for my space game and in this video I will show you how I did it using Godot Engine Path to the Node. If you are developing an open world game like Milky Way Mail Link, by the way follow Milky Way Mail Link in the description, you know how tedious it can be to manually place every asteroid, every enemy, every collectible in your level, right? And this is why I created this tool that distributes objects along a path, allowing me to quickly design the levels of my game. So let me show you how this works. So this is the playground level of Milky Way Made Inc. Basically just a level where I play test some stuff. And well, the way that this tool works is that I just have to basically add a distribute along path node and as you can see it asks for a curve, it has a turbulence and an interval. So the interval is the distance between one object and the other, turbulence is kind of like a randomness that I like to add to this position so I usually add something like 20. This is something that is really interesting about the way that I'm designing uh, Milk Way Mailing Inc because I'm trying to be very deliberate with how I follow the composition over inheritance principle. So as you are going to see, the, 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 the way that I approach this is by adding some responsibilities and creating an assembly line in which each object will uh, be part of this assembly line in the process. So the idea is that, well, I want to distribute instance of asteroids along a path. So I need to create these instances, right? And the way that I do that is using a spawner. So you can see I have a spawner right here. I went as a child of this distribute along path. And how I'm going to do that? Well, when the spawner creates an object, so when it emits its created signal, I'm going to connect this to the distribute method of the distribute along path node. So whenever an object is created by the, this spawner, it will be distributed along this path. And the way that I'm going to count how many objects I want to distribute is by using a counter, which is kind of like an auxiliary class that I created that is basically a for loop and each iteration it emits a counted signal. This may sound very silly to do, but guys, this helps a lot, <laughs> a lot. And I also have a random uh, range counter as well. So let's use the random range counter instead. I didn't plan to use that, but uh, let's see how this works. I want to create uh, between five and 10 asteroids. So I'm going to connect the counted to the create method of the spawner. Well, basically this is it. I just need to trigger the, the counter now. I'm going to use the ready uh, signal to trigger it, count, connect, and that's it. <laughs> so now let's create this curve, right? So I have this curve right here. Let's create one point here, one point here, one there, and one right at the enter, uh, at the front of the Milky Way Milling Inc. So you can see that I'm already using this to surround the, the Milky Way Milling Inc. with asteroids, right? And, but, but the way that I want to do this curve is to actually make it a curve instead of just uh, a straight line. So I'm going to do that and this as well. <laughs> so this is the shape that we are going to distribute these objects. And well, if we see the asteroid scene, I'm going to just measure its diameter. So yeah, so let's use a, a 200 a spacing of 200 so an interval of 200 pixels here and i think that i'm going to increase the turbulence to 40. okay saved and well in the spawner of course i have to add the asteroid and the container i'm going to use the asteroids container which is this one i'm going to take uh, move this outside of this container so saved and well if everything goes well <laughs> uh, we are going to have between five and then asteroids dis distributed along this line. And there we have it. Pretty cool. <laughs> so let's see how this, um, how the, the script of the distribute along path works. Isn't that is a very simple script. So this is the thing guys, instead of having like a huge class that will be something like Rando distribute along path spawner, 
which is something that will bundle all of these responsibilities. I broke them down into uh, smaller classes, so following the interface segregation principle. And this allows me to mix and match these classes so I can use these responsibilities in many situations. This is the, the power of breaking things down into components, because if I want to use a random a random counter for anything else other than uh, spawning uh, an object, I can do that and I'm, I'm am actually doing that. Uh, you can see that is a very simple script. I have a current index, I have a target interval, which I didn't, uh, I don't actually use the current index yet because I'm going to use it to know uh, how many times I already distributed uh, an object in this specific object so that I can do some uh, operations with that. But you can see that I have here at the very beginning how many objects I can distribute along the path without overlapping using the interval and the, the baked length of the curve. So this allows me to tell, for instance, in the random, let's say if I want to use a counter, right? So uh, instead of a random range counter, I can use a counter that will automatically receive how many objects it should, how many times it should count based on the length of the curve and the interval. So the, the how many objects I can put inside this curve taking into account its interval. In the distribute method, I have a, the position along path, which is a sample baked position that takes into account the, the res resolution of the, the curve and it will try to map a position inside of this curve. So let's say that we have a position that we have a curve right here and a position that is kind of like here, right? So it will sample this position right uh, inside the curve. So probably something like here, right? So this is what this method does. And after that, I turn this position into a global representation because this uh, curve points, so the curves, the points inside a curve are expressed into local vector two points. So I have to turn them into a, a global position using the two global method. And after that, I basically just set up this position that I got doing that to the object global position and I add some turbulence after that. I increase the interval so that the next object will appear on the next interval, right? And I also wrap the, the interval so that if I reach the, f the, the length of the curve, it will go right back into the beginning. And after that, I emit a signal telling that an object was distributed along this path and uh, well, someone, some other class can do something with it. So this is the, the assembly line process. This is the power of following some design principles such as the composition of an inheritance and the solid principles, right? This allows me to mix and match all these objects and create objects in real time dynamically. So I, I don't need to actually position uh, an asteroid in the in a given line and add a quest go inside of it. I can basically just delegate this to these classes. And well, if you want to learn all of these techniques that I'm showing you right here, so the composition of inheritance, solid principles, design patterns, and all of this stuff, well, you can join the Mission Celine Mentorship in which I will take you by hand so that we can create a replica of the game Asteroid. And as we create this replica, I'm going to teach all of these principles. But yeah, for this video, that's it. The link to join the Mission Celine will be in the description. Hurry up because I only have nine slots left. And after that, I will only have a slot available, I think that on September, something like this, because I already have some people join, uh, some people already joined the Mission Celine. But that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Keep developing and until the next time. See you there.